And then there became the fear of fire, you know, with, with, with some of the battery chemistries that were the early lithiums that were yeah. prone to burning up and thermally running away, having a thermal event. These are all lithium iron phosphate. Lithium iron phosphate does not have the thermal runaway that right. some of those other ones do. In fact, all of our systems meet what's called the UL9540A standard, which means these are suitable to be inside inside your home. They need to be in, the, in a non-living space. You don't want it in your bedroom next to your bed, but in a utility room, in a basement, in a garage. All of that is just fine. So we made all the stringent UL codes to make that happen. So the, the electric scooters, the electric skateboards, that you see popping off sparks and fire that you see on the news, and different the news goes crazy yeah. about this. All of your products are a whole different, different chemistry. Okay. Yeah. The only we do have some of the very smallest products still use some of the cobalt-based batteries, the NCM or NCA style batteries, um, but only our very smallest product. We've gone to lithium iron phosphate on almost everything. Now. Okay. I think that's a good segue into your battery types. Yes. What do you think? Absolutely. Let's go look at them. Okay. Three, two, one, action. So let's talk about battery construction. There are really two types of ways that you can build a LiPo 4 battery, correct? Correct, correct. And I think I brought a couple examples out here to kind of show you. This is, okay. and I don't, I don't know what product this is out of, but it's one we had in our, in our validation room. These are cylindrical cells, okay? okay? And I, the, the, whether these are LFP or NMC, doesn't matter, they're cylindricals. And if you notice that there's a series of battery cells here, it looks like there's about 16 here, 16 here and 16 here. Okay. All of these have to be connected. So this looks like it's all the positives over here. I'm assuming the negatives are going to be under here. So you have all of these in a combination of series and parallel to build up to the voltage and amp hours you need for, for the desired effect. So a lot of our competitors use cylindrical cells. They're more readily available. Um, they're a little bit easier to manufacture in the automated process where they're just coiling everything up and we can kind of show you some of that in a moment. But this is kind of the standard that's been out there. Okay, so we choose to use prismatics. So here's an example of our UT1300 battery and if you peek inside, we don't have a series of cylinders. Okay. We have a series of cells, and this one's larger, but a series of cells look more like this. Okay. This is called a prismatic cell, where in a battery this size, we would normally have well over 120 cylindricals to come up to this same voltage and amp hours if we were using cylindrical cells. When we're using prismatics, it only takes four. So each one of these cells is 3.2 nominal voltage and 105 amp hours. So if you look inside, this is simply four cells wired in series, positive to negative, negative to positive, et cetera, to build up that series battery. Okay. Um, pros and cons. Obviously, each one of these have their advantages and disadvantages. One of the advantages of a prismatic cell is there's only the four connections. So there's a lot less to go wrong. There's also a lot less wiring or connection points for energy to pass through. Every time you make a connection, whether it's with a wire or a weld, you're creating a point of resistance for that energy to flow. Okay. Obviously, uh, resistance is usually manifest in heat or a reduction in the amount of energy or energy loss. And so by going to a prismatic, we normally get a more efficient battery cell than if we're doing a bunch of cylindricals. The other advantage is because of the large surface area of the individual anodes and cathodes inside of this cell, they give up energy easier and they absorb energy easier. So typically when you compare our battery products to our competition, our discharge rate will be at a higher rate continuously. So for example, the UT1300 battery can discharge 150 amps continuous, where a lot of our competitors are only 100 amps continuous. Um, conversely, we can normally charge uh, a little bit faster also. Um, I wanted to show you a little bit of how the construction is done, and this is a, a kind of a, an example that's falling apart, but all battery cells 
that are lithium based, lithium iron phosphate, have an anode and a cathode material and it's usually on a thin sheet of metal and that thin sheet of metal has the lithium applied to it and then it's either stacked or coiled. So in the case of a cylindrical battery, they come off an automatic machine and they're just coiled up and cut and coiled and cut. When it comes to a prismatic, they're built into a stack and then inserted into a, into a, in this case, an aluminum case. Okay. They also do these in a pouch. You may have heard of pouch cells. Uh, they just don't have the rigid aluminum case and rely on other sources to protect them. But we use all prismatic. All right, well, what we have here is the new UT1300 Bluetooth battery. If you notice, it looks exactly like the same UT1300 that, that you're used to. That I have in my coach. Exactly, but if you notice, there's a little Bluetooth light here on top. Okay. And so all the batteries we're shipping now have the Bluetooth um, in them. I wanted to show you, um, if I go to my Lion Energy app here on my phone, so you can see my own personal summit is already on here. So the summit that we, that we showed you guys earlier does also have a, a Bluetooth connection. But if I go down here and I hit the little plus button, it'll, ask, it'll show all the available devices. Now since we're here in the warehouse, we have a whole warehouse full of Bluetooth enabled devices. Oh. But if I look on the side of the unit, this one looks like the, let me see the serial number. It looks like the serial number on this one ends in oh. 0043. Oh, I see. See that? And so I can go through here until I find it. So there, there's that item right there. I select it. And if you notice, the Bluetooth light came on on top oh, yeah. of here. Okay. And so I can tell on this battery now, on the app, I can tell that we're at 76% full on that battery. Currently, the battery is at 71.6 degrees, and the voltage is at 13.31 volts. Okay. Um, if we were using the battery, so if this was in your coach, you'd be able to see incoming or outgoing watts as it's charging. So just one more check, you can pull right from your phone and see the status of your batteries. Now will this show each individual battery or, or the, the string? Each individual battery. Okay. So you know, a lot of people have said, hey, I already have, in your case, eight batteries. What if I wanted to see all eight on Bluetooth without replacing them all? If you do add one Bluetooth battery to the string, in theory, they normally stay balanced, right? They stay within a tenth of a volt or so of each other as long as you balance them when you put them oh, in. Okay. So they're all going to be at a very similar percentage and a very similar voltage and a very similar temperature. Okay. So while you won't see each individual battery unless each have Bluetooth, you will be able to at least get an idea of how your bank is doing. Okay, so let's talk about warranty mm -hmm. uh, for LiPo batteries. And in, I mean, you can kind of go over it in general maybe. Mm -hmm. And then what Lion Energy does with their warranty. Sure. I think in general, I think everyone needs to understand that it doesn't matter if it's our lithium iron phosphate battery or one of our competitors. Lithium iron phosphate in, in the large part all performs very similarly. Obviously, different battery man cell manufacturers can do different things to add additional life cycles or reduce life cycles or add a little bit more amp hours to, to a given size cell. But in general, the degradation or the cell, the cell life cycle depletion, if you will, is very similar amongst all, all lithium iron phosphate okay. batteries. Most of these cells are made, at least the prismatics, are made to last between five and 6,000 life cycles at 100% depth of discharge. Um, and that's under ideal situations. So, forgive me, but I'm, I'm gonna get real simplistic here. I'm just gonna explain. You and I have already had this conversation yep. and I just want to share it. So when you're talking about uh, zero to 100 percent, we're talking about discharging that battery clear down to zero, yep. all the way back up to 100. Correct. And the, the battery should be able to accept how many of those full charges, zero to 100 charges? If they're done, and I'll say under ideal conditions, they're going to last between five and 6,000 life cycles. Now keep in mind the I don't know where this industry norm came from, but 80% but is kind of considered end of life. So when we say five to 6,000 life cycles, that means at the end of that, the cells are still gonna have 80% of their original life left. 
but to the industry, that's kind of the end of their of their normal life. You're still going to be able to use that battery for a long, long time. Okay. Obviously, a 105 amp hour cell at the end of life is still going to have over 80 amp hours of energy left in it. For the warranty purpose, where that comes in, we warrant this for 3,500 life cycles to account for. You know, we can't control the temperatures where someone's charging and discharging their battery. We can't control how hard they're running their battery. Some people are going to try to run, you know, an 1800, 2000 watt inverter off of a single battery, which with their 150 amp output you can do. But when you're doing that, that's a lot harder on the cell than if you're just pulling half of that amperage out at a time to run your normal coach. And so since we can't control how hard they run the battery and the temperatures, um, we're going to war we warrant all of our UT1300 batteries for 3500 life cycles at 100% depth of discharge. And the, where the lifetime part comes in is we don't have any time limit on that. So if you're a full-time RVer and you're running that from full to dead every single day, you're going to get roughly 10 years out of that before you've hit those life cycles. 365 days a year? Yep. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that would actually be 3,650, right? 3,650, carry the zero, you know, life cycles. Okay. Um, so it's 10 years if you use it every day. We don't want to limit you to 10 years because most people don't do that. Most people, if they're like me, at best hope to get out 30 nights a year in our RV. And so we don't want them to be limited by 10 years. And there's a couple of things we've done to help make sure our battery's not going to age by time, but strictly by life cycles. And that's all controlled by the battery management system, the BMS. We control how fast the charge goes in, how high the battery voltage gets, how low the battery voltage gets to protect itself, so that we make sure you as the consumer are able to use the full 3500 plus life cycles. And so on that warranty, I think the question came up earlier, Jim, you asked me about, well, what happens if it just stops discharging altogether? If it were to completely fail and stop charging or discharging, the cell life doesn't matter anymore. We're going to replace that battery because there's been some other catastrophic failure. 15 years down the road? It doesn't matter. 20 years down the road? It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And, and you know, one of the things we really pride ourselves on is our customer service here at Line Energy. We have a great customer service team. You met Greg earlier today, who's our customer service manager. They really go out of their way to try and take care of you. Um, typically, we'll even replace a battery before we've even got the replacement back because we understand you're out in the field. You guys need to keep going. You still need that energy where you're going. So we don't want warranty to ever be a reason why you wouldn't buy a Line Energy battery. On the flip side, we think it should be why you would buy a line energy battery. Okay, so you mentioned BMS. Mm -hmm. uh, for those that don't know, that's the battery management system, correct? Correct. And that's what makes, that's what will help protect these batteries from either overcharging, undercharging, getting too hot, getting too cold, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? It will protect the battery. That's what Correct. the BMS is meant to do. And every battery has a BMS in it. Every good manufacturer of a lithium iron phosphate battery should have a BMS in it. They okay. don't all. Oh, there, really? There's some batteries, especially if you're buying some that are a brand that no one would necessarily recognize, but maybe an inexpensive version off of, off of the internet somewhere. Those don't all come with the BMS. Sometimes those are just a straight four cells wired to the outputs. Oh, so you could run into problems. You could run into problems. Um, and, and then there's different grades of BMS. You know, a couple of years ago, most of those battery manufacturers figured out they had to at least put something in there to do some regulation to make them work properly. But not all BMSs are created equal. Uh, you know, we have a large team of engineers here to spend a lot of time on our battery management systems, our energy management systems for our, for our larger systems, etc., to control and manage the energy inside of these cells. Um, most of our good brand name competitors that you would have heard of all have good BMS systems. Um, we do feel like we do a few things better. Um, some of that stuff's proprietary and internal to help us extend the battery life. But you're exactly right. They help control. Um, how fast that, that battery will charge. So for example, on this battery, we do 100 amp continuous as the maximum. If you were to apply a charge larger than that, the BMS would block. Wouldn't let you hurt the battery cell. It, it also controls how fast energy comes out. 
this unit is rated for 150 amp continuous. If you try to pull more than that, it will block and won't allow. Now the BMS can also do some magic and do a power curve. You know, one of the things that our battery can do that many can't is we can run a dump trailer off of a single battery. That dump trailer takes a lot more than 150 amps to get going. It's upwards of 900 plus amps oh, to get going. Okay. And so we have that charge curve built into our BMS to allow those dump trailers to go ahead and charge hmm. without causing long-term damage to the battery. So in addition to the, the energy flow control, there's also the temperature that you mentioned. It doesn't matter what battery chemistry you're using, even lead acid batteries, no batteries should ever be charged when they're below freezing. Um, you create a, a situation where you're actually damaging the cells and taking away from their battery life. The difference is in a lithium iron phosphate battery, especially one like the UT1300, the BMS has a temperature sensor that's attached to those cells. When the temperature gets too cold to charge, it will block the incoming charging current. The nice thing is you can still discharge all the way down to negative temperatures. Okay. It will still allow it to discharge. So we can control charge and discharge independently from one another to protect your battery. Okay. So and you're not going to lose your strength. You're not going to lose your strength. Okay. So you mentioned temperature. Mm -hmm. um, the, the BMS is going to not allow a charge on this battery at 32 Fahrenheit or zero Celsius Correct. and below. Correct. Um, do you have any ways around that for those that want to go hunting or snowmobiling or whatever? I guess Kelly said ice, ice fishing. Yeah, ice fishing. Yeah. yeah. We do. In fact, it's funny. This actually came from um, a vendor that was building these aftermarket for us, and then we eventually brought them in line. This is called the Lion Heat. And, and this is simply a warming blanket that's going to go around your battery as well as a, a warming pad that's going to go around it as well. Okay. So you've got wires that are going to connect up here for your positive and negative. Okay. That's got a little on-off switch inside the oh. bag and a temperature sensor. And if, if you turn it on, um, when the temperature gets to 32 or below, this will turn on and it will warm until the cells are up above 40 degrees and then it will automatically turn off. This uses the internal energy in the battery. So if you're boondocking and don't have an external source, this is a great solution. The warming blanket simply helps it retain the heat. Okay. If you are in the process of using the battery, if you're actively discharging and charging it, it's generating its own heat. Sure. So oftentimes, just by insulating it in that blanket, it's gonna have enough to maintain the charge. For those who want a more permanent installed solution, um, in the very near future, in the next 30 to 60 days, you will see the Bluetooth with built-in heater available on the market. Oh, no kidding. Oh, so that is, that is coming up. It'll be in time that we'll have plenty for this fall for those who want to buy them for the hunting season or for the winter season. The difference with that heater, where this heater uses the internal energy of the battery, that heater runs off of the incoming charging source. So if your battery is just sitting there not being installed or not being charged, it won't heat it. But if you have incoming charge from either solar or from being plugged in, it will warm the cells from the inside automatically. Okay. Lion Energy has got an amazing facility here in American Fork, Utah. And this is where you're headquartered, right? Yeah. Right, right here in the in the state of Utah in, yeah. in the US. So can you give us a little background about because this this building we we got a tour of the building a little earlier, and this building's huge. It just keeps going and going. And you said that you going. kind of expanded over the years, uh, you know. So I first joined the company back in 2017. There was about eight of us. We're a little over 150 people right now. We've moved multiple times because we've just expanded and expanded. Uh, we used to have a part of this building. We've expanded to the whole part of the building. We used to have two places right across the parking lot here. We used to have a facility oh. down in Orem. And we just kind of have been growing and growing, trying to find the space to produce all these great products. We even now have a, a facility as much as this one was impressive. We have another one in Atlanta, so we have kind of both coasts almost, oh, if you will. But okay. our corporate headquarters are here, and uh, we do most everything here, and then replicate that in our facility in Atlanta. So it's really... And, 
And, and you're expanding on this one now as we speak. Yeah, you, you saw when we went through there, we kind of did some cutouts to get to the other part of yeah. the building. We've and added some offices. Some of the walls that were yeah, those walls are new. I mean, we, we left to go on vacation this last weekend and came back, and there's a whole new, <laughs> whole new section built back there. But you've got, you've got a second floor, a loft, if you will, or a second floor, whatever you, know, you want to call that, and, and your inventory that you've got on hand. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's, that's, that's a lot of inventory. We're very fortunate, you know, with the, the group that owns this company is very invested in making sure we don't run out of product. Um, we haven't always been perfect at that, especially back during the COVID years. Um, we, we ran out of UT1300 batteries at one point, and I remember the RV dealers just obviously up in arms, everybody wanted batteries. Our owners vowed we'd never have that situation again, turn around and order an entire year's supply. So I think in the last 18 months, we've never once back ordered a UT-1300 battery. Oh, well, that's impressive. Yeah. And then to go along with that, your quality control and engineering departments here are just, they're mind-blowing. We have a phrase here that we use internally. It has to be grandma approved. So all of our stuff gets tested and retested over and over again to make sure that it's good enough for our own grandparents to be able to use before we ship it out. And you saw earlier a whole lot of that technology, that, that infrastructure is just to support making sure that we produce great quality products here. You know, it, it's interesting. It, I think a lot of people don't understand who we are as a company at Lion Energy. I think a lot of people think, oh, we just go to China, we find a battery, we import it. Um, that's not what we do. All of our product is fully engineered by our staff that's here. You guys had a chance to kind of walk through me, some of our engineering staff today. Yeah. I think you had to walk into our software design department where they're writing the app, they're writing the software for the control Talk systems. about geeking out. It was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's interesting. It's a very dark room with a lot of energy drinks in the fridge in the corner. Which is what it is like. <laughs> in the garage dark with his energy drink. But because we do all the engineering ourselves and design everything ourselves, we're not yet at the point where we can manufacture everything in America. The, the battery cells aren't here. All the cells still come from China. And that is still the number one component that, that makes up most of our products. Um, you know, earlier we referenced and, and it talked about our plan to move production back to America. You know, we're fortunate to be partnered with a company called American Battery Factory, which will be opening a facility in Tucson, Arizona to make the prismatic cells that we talked about with you guys earlier. Okay. Once that's here, that will enable us to move that manufacturing back. Until then, we do contract manufacturing. We have our own factories in Asia to the extent you can't have your own, right? Um, and we control the manufacturing in those facilities, but it's still not right here under our control. And because of that, we want to make sure every piece of equipment we sell meets the specs that our engineers have designed it to. And so what you saw walking through our facility is our testing department where every single item officially in our quality manual says anything over 200 and I think 96 watt hours goes through a 100% QC test. We do test some of the items smaller than that to 100%. About the only things we don't do 100% test on are the very small power banks. Um, but other than those, every single item gets put on a bench, every single input and output gets plugged in, and an automatic testing machine that again is designed here by our automation team goes through and checks to make sure that everything is in working order, everything's in range, and that those batteries are the way they're supposed to be and everything's functioning properly. Only then, that when it gets a little pat, the green past comes up on the screen, then it kicks out the final serial number that goes on the outside of the box, that's packed, and it's sent out to the warehouse for distribution. Yep. Every single battery. Every single battery. Yeah, that's sorry, right. every every single solar generator, yep. yeah. every uh, they all get QC'd right they here before they go out the door. Yeah. They do. I think you even saw even our large sanctuary system with those batteries that are oh, yeah. 277 pounds a piece. Yeah. They have a special lift that lifts them up, puts them in the rack, and every one in that case, we even do a full discharge and charge test on every single battery. We know that's going to go into someone's home, and it's going to be there for the next 25 to 30 years. It's important to us that that meets the spec we designed it to, and that it's going to be safe and perform yeah. properly. So we do that test on every single item. And of course, we use all of our stuff as well, right? So we're users of our stuff to get first-hand experience with it as well. And if there ever seems to be a problem, so maybe you have a buyer's remorse or somewhere and go, oh, maybe I didn't check with the missus or the mister or whatever in your home, 
and you can bring it back. We have our customer services here. All of our customers support us here. You can call us, you can get a hold of us. We're here based in Utah and we take care of all of our customer needs, regardless of what it might be. You know, earlier we were showing you the new app that, that uh -huh. we have for the UT1300. The Summit also runs off of that app. Um, the new Safari that we, that we showed you a little earlier will run off of that app. All of that data, it's no secret that all that data gets collected somewhere. With most of our competition, that somewhere is a server offshore. Um, with, our, uh, with our app, all the data is collected and held in the United States. It's all on a U.S. server. We're the ones that control the software. We're the ones that wrote the app. We're the one that controls that data and utilizes it in a safe manner. So when, when you buy from Lion Energy, yes, our product is still manufactured in China as we're sitting here today. We're in the process of moving that back to the U.S., but all other functions are done here. Our engineering, our design, some assembly, all of our QC and testing, all customer service is all here. Yeah, and it's great. important to note, even with the data, we don't sell that, we don't give that to anybody, we don't let anybody else have access to that. That's just private information that we use to support our customers even better. So it's not shared with any, any other entity. Well, I tell everybody I love Lion batteries and coming here and seeing how they treat their, their employees on quality control, I, I'm just, I'm blown away. I am. So as, we, as we've told you guys before, we don't promote a product or a service that we don't use ourselves or that we don't think matches our reputation and, and, and our reputation is staked on that. And, and these guys, you know, we've been here all day. It's been a long day, but we've been here all day. And we're very, very impressed, and, and we'd like to come back if you guys will have Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Uh, this is, and if you have any questions, you know, put a comment down below, uh, shoot us an email. You've got our email, or give these guys a call uh, here at Lion Energy. It's, it's just, it's really a great company. We are so impressed. Oh yes. Uh, that we would like to come back and and bother you again sometime. You're welcome you're, anytime. You're always welcome. You know, Lion Energy, it's sort of like you're part of the pride. You're part of our family. So you're part of our family. You come back anytime you want. And for anyone who'd like to visit, we're here in American Fork. Come over and see us. We'd be happy to show you around. Right off I-15. Yep, right off the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We are going to wrap this one up from American Fork. It all starts with an idea. And turn those ideas into reality and create memories Lots and lots of new memories, guys, just like we are. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.